These are some of my principles for success, and we'll put them all together. So principle number one is experimenting your way continuously. So you're never done experimenting. It's just every day. Boom, 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 boom. You're always experimenting. So A-B testing. Develop your talent stack relentlessly. In other words, uh, the, the several talents it takes to do what I'm doing now, I had to assemble over time. Learn lighting, learn sound, learn, learn live stream, learn how the algorithm works on YouTube, learn how to promote it, learn how to upload it. Learn, you know, there's a lot. But you just keep, keep edging up, keep building that talent stack, keep A-B testing continuously, never stop. I'm not done now by any means. I'll keep going. And, and there you are. And then the last part is getting lucky because luck is kind of required for success. Because if you don't have good luck, you might have bad luck, and that's not going to help you. So how do you make luck happen if you don't have direct control over you know, the universe? I'd like to uh, wrap this up with a little uh, lesson on success. Are you ready? A lesson on success. There are lots of ways to be successful. Um, some of them involve luck and inheritance and crime and those things. And some of them are just hard work and being smart and staying out of jail. And those are good. But there are more, um, let's say, uh, subtle and unique and useful ways to be successful. And I've been modeling one of them in front of you for the last several years, and I want to put some words to it. One of the things I talk about all the time is A-B testing, where you just try something, see if it works, and then quickly try something else to see if that's better until you sort of test your way to success. You've seen me try to transfer uh, or evolve from cartoonist to whatever this is, political pundit or whatever live streaming is. I don't know if it has a, a career name to it. But what you've watched is from the beginning, I started very small with small risk. And just, I literally, on day one, I picked up my phone and said, I'd like to know more about this Periscope thing, just to know more about it. I felt like that was something my talent stack needed. So I started just Periscoping with my phone in my hand, and the quality was terrible. And I think, you know, a dozen people showed up the first time. But I learned something. And then I thought, huh, maybe I'll do this again. And I kept experimenting up, uh, buying uh, studio equipment, experimenting with sound, researching video. I bought a number of different expensive devices like that. There's a $13,000 device over my shoulder here for studio production, etc. Now, none of the expensive equipment worked. And when I say worked, I don't mean it was broken. I mean that for what I wanted to accomplish, it didn't work. And here's what I mean. My other requirement, and these are some of my principles for success, and we'll put them all together. So principle number one is experimenting your way continuously. So you're never done experimenting. It's just every day. Boom, 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 boom. You're always experimenting. So I've experimented with my setup and my technology until I have this setup, which I believe is the best I can get to while maintaining my other principles, which I'll talk about in a minute. So right now I've got motorized curtains, which is huge, so I can do a a blackout of all my light. I've got two ring lights facing the walls, so I'm getting indirect light. And I'm using two iPads together, clipped together with a potato chip bag clip so that they don't fall off the stand. And so I have two live streams going, YouTube and Periscope simultaneously on two iPads that are both in front of me here. Now, I tried every complicated technology to do what I'm doing right now. And you could get better quality. You could get better video. You'd have to record it to do that. Live streaming is a lower resolution. Um, And you could get better sound, you know, with full production things, but you'd have to soundproof the room, etc. And here's what I would lose if I went to the higher level of quality. Number one, it wouldn't be fun anymore. Because I like the content and the getting ready for it. I like the experience. I love actually being live on the live stream. 
It's partly why I do it, because I like it. And I wouldn't enjoy it if I had to spend an hour every morning uh, reloading my software and testing and rebooting, and that's what you do with the complicated systems. You need either a full-time engineer or a techie who works with you the whole time, and then you're managing people. It's not what I wanted to do. I don't want to manage people. I want to just do this. I just want to talk to you. And so I managed but through testing to get to the quality up to the point where these, these simple lavalier microphones, I've got two of them, one for each iPad, and the iPad quality and the lighting, et cetera, were good enough for live streaming in a way that YouTube would say, oh, these videos are high enough quality, could be better, but they're high enough quality that we can you know, promote them, et cetera. So once I reached a certain level and it was live streamed instead of recorded, because what I used to do is take the Periscope and upload it onto YouTube and it was lower quality and took longer. So um, yes, and it wouldn't be as personal. I, I didn't want this to be a slick production. So here were the other requirements. It had to be dead simple so that I could do it myself. Because as soon as you add an assistant in the room, it's just the chemistry is wrong. And then I'm managing people, and they've got problems, and they didn't show up today, and they've got a question, but I'm trying to think of what I'm going to say, but now I'm drawn into the technical problem because I need to answer a question. right? So A-B testing. Develop your talent stack relentlessly. In other words, uh, the... The several talents it takes to do what I'm doing now, I had to assemble over time. Learn lighting, learn sound, learn, learn live stream, learn how the algorithm works in YouTube, learn how to promote it, learn how to upload it. Learn, yeah, there's a lot. But you just keep, keep edging up, keep building that talent stack, keep A-B testing continuously, never stop. I'm not done now by any means. I'll keep going. And... And there you are. And then the last part is getting lucky. Because luck is kind of required for success. Because if you don't have good luck, you might have bad luck. And that's not going to help you. So how do you make luck happen if you don't have direct control over you know, the universe? And the way that you make luck happen is you go where the energy is and you practice in public. And you wait. That's it. If you go where the energy is, you're going to find more luck. For example, when I graduated from college, I was in a very small town in upstate New York, and so I knew that there wouldn't be much luck. You could call it opportunity, but I'm going to call it luck. I'm not going to run into people that could you know, help me someday. I'm not going to accidentally be part of a startup. I need to go where there's energy. So I moved to California. That was the first thing I did after college because I wanted to be where luck could happen. And that was a good play. In this case, I moved to the, the more dynamic video field. So it was obvious that uh, live streaming and video is the big growing thing. So you go where the energy is, and you have more chance of getting lucky, because there's just more stuff happening. And then, if you can stay in business long enough... And certainly, it wasn't wasn't like I was making money or anything from doing this for the first three years. But I didn't go out of business. In other words, it wasn't anything to make me stop doing it. I could just keep getting better and wait for some luck to happen. And then some luck happened. It came in the the form of this uh, election. Of course, it's not luck, it was scheduled. But the election makes all the live streaming stuff on this topic go crazy, so all my numbers went through the roof because it's the right topic at the right time. But also the coronavirus. The coronavirus obviously is not luck for the world, but it caused live streaming and this form of entertainment to just you know, zoom in importance, no pun intended. And so I'm in the right place at the right time, but not by luck. I engineered very consciously a move from a sleepy world of cartooning to a dynamic, visible world where luck could find me. And luck is finding me all over the place. So those are your your tips. 
Go where it's dynamic, where luck can find you. A-B test continuously to improvement. Build your still skill stack over time. If you do those three things, your odds of something good happening in a few years, you know, not year one, but in a few years, is really good. It's exactly the same process I used for building Dilbert and for other things that have worked out. So that is your tip for the day. Uh, so somebody says in the comments, lucky guy. Definitely there's luck. There is definite luck. But I would say that anybody who did what I did, meaning pursuing the energy, building a talent stack, A-B testing, if you do those three things, luck is going to find you. <laughs>